Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. This comes as a new episode in the in the selection of national interest articles that we have made. National interest articles written between the summer, between May of 2014, since the rise of Mr. Modi and 2018 or mid-2018 from when we started giving you the video version of our columns as well. Until then, we were not doing so. Now, what I'm doing these days is I'm picking up, I'm making a selection of all the, out of all the national interest articles written since the summer of 2014 to be published in a new book. Some of you might remember that my a selection similarly of my political articles until 2014, until the rise of Mr. Modi, that was put together in a book called titled Anticipating India. Now, I asked you for suggestions for some names. I've got quite a few. So, soon enough, we'll zero in on one and this will be, this, this work will be finished. This is a work in progress. So, by the time the new government is about to be sworn in, you will have the new one, the new selection. Now, some of those articles which will be part of this selection but which have not yet been given the video version. So I am now recording for you the video version of these. So you can watch these on video, you can hear these on audio, on podcast, as, as you wish. But what these articles do is, the selection of articles does is, they tell you how our politics evolved in this period. I might have been wrong a few times, I might be right a few times. You can figure that out. So here is one more and this came up. This was published on July 1, 2017, when Justin Trudeau, the same Justin Trudeau, had started a very interesting debate on what is liberalism. And that is when I wrote this article, This National Interest, which was then headlined a case for dehyphenated liberalism. So what do we mean? I keep telling you that we do unhyphenated journalism. Anytime I make, I make a call, or I make a request for a subscription, for a paid subscription, I also remind you that we do unhyphenated journalism. So what did we mean when we made the case of a dehyphenated liberalism? So here we go. So what did we mean when we made the case for a dehyphenated liberalism? What is dehyphenated liberalism? So here I go. As I said, credit for this goes to, credit for sparking this thought in my mind goes to Justin Trudeau. Who had just who had then become a global liberal star as we described him. Therefore, Canada's young prime minister and global liberal star, middle of 2017, much before he became so unpopular in India. So, Canada's young prime minister and global liberal star Justin Trudeau first made the term hyphenated liberal popular, even if he was even if he was using it in a limited way to rally together his party men divided among the many factions, each linked to a leader whose ideas it followed, notably John Hreshen and Paul Martin. I am therefore claiming authorship, at least in our domestic context, to the idea of dehyphenated liberalism, just as I might have laid claims to the authorship of the idea of povertarianism almost 15 years before this one. So what exactly do we mean by dehyphenated liberalism? I need to also explain to you because therein also lies the mission statement or the philosophy of the journalism that the print does. If liberalism means viewing ideas, issues, people with an open mind, can it survive being qualified with a hyphenated allegiance, left liberal, right liberal, like that. Left and right will only be the two broadest choices. If liberalism were to be hyphenated, with center thrown in for the lazy and indecisive. In India, it could also be liberalism drawn from the gentler socialism of Nehru, deeper pink of Indra, a kind of saffron pink, yes, such a thing exists today in India, a kind of saffron pink of Deendhyal Upadhyay. Or, or you can pick one of a hundred choices, start on the left, start on the left from widely respected social scientist Partha Chatterjee, who found General Bipin Rawat, then the Chief of Army Staff, 
echoing General Dyer and then put our liberal commitment to a higher test by insisting that the tribal states of the Northeast and Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir were India's colonial possessions. The Northeast, a bequest from the British and Kashmir, a conquest of our own. Never mind how the constitution defines the republic, republic as in the nation, not the TV channel that claims to speak for it, or, or swing all the way to the right and join Tarun Vijay of the RSS, who fights for Dalit equality in temples and wants the Delhi Golf Club delicensed and converted into a cultural center for the Northeast because of its racist insult of a Meghalaya tribal. Never mind again that his own ideology is engaged in a brutal campaign to deny the same ethnicities their normal food, beef for the Northeast tribes for example, this was the case then, since then the BJP has made some corrections in that area, and the same Dalits they are living, which is leather and shoemaking, more and that comes, that comes from, from the whole Gaurakshak business. More contemporarily, you could also be judged depending on whether you went to the Jantar Mantar protest or use the hashtag not in my name. Remember there was a protest like that when these lynchings took place, hashtag not in my name and people went to Jantar Mantar in protests, both of which tests this writer fails. This test of the left I fail, this test of the right I fail. Labels are chips on our shoulders. The heavier the label, the greater the burden and it makes it that much tougher to keep open minds or if you do answer searching questions. Some questions I'll give you samples. Why do you keep switching sides Shekhar Gupta? Can't you decide which side you are on? Why are you being a weathercock, a mausam vagyanik or more apt and contemptuous in Hindi, are thali ka mango no tum, right? You're shifting sides like a like a brinjal on a or on a plate. You can hear it from the left when you praise Prime Minister Narendra Modi's reformist move in selling off Air India and a brave move, by the way, after attacking him and his ideology over beef lynchings. Then from the right, when you condemn an army major's use of a human shield after a track record of muscul muscularly backing India's case on Kashmir with few ifs and buts. The question you would then be asked is, how can you be with India and not with Indian Army? Or questioned by even the center when you call that Rawat, General Rawat, General Dyer comparison a flaky clickbait as I did. That article also I'll read out to you one of these weeks. How dare you when you know the scholar's reputation? That's the question. That's Partha Chatterjee's reputation. Formidable. There are, there are simple answers to all three sets of questions. First, just as two wrongs don't make a right, a dozen wrongs do not so erase a right, so you can't refuse to accept it exists. Second, supporting your country and its army doesn't mean you unthinkingly back the constitutionally illegal and militarily immoral action of one of its officers out of tens of thousands who would never do such a thing. And third, what has reputation got to do with facts? And if an intellectual's reputation was to justify shutting out the debate or shutting at least the lesser ones like us out of the debate, it isn't liberal. You might still insist that it is, but find a hyphen to fit your definition. Maybe you will say left liberal. That helps us define dehyphenated liberalism once again. Much has been written and debated on these issues globally. The rise of Trump, Brexit, and the fear of Le Pen in France. Also the further radicalization of the counter as, as in Bernie Sanders is Democrats in America and Jeremy Corbyn's Labour in, in Britain. These also find a parallel in the Modi Shah BJP shifting to harder saffron nationalism and its rivals to sharper hyper-liberalism. One side therefore will lock up JNU students allegedly shouting allegedly shouting Bharat Tere Tukde slogans with sedition charges and under UAPA, while the other would land up on their campus in their defense. The result, the former wins. The loser is the liberal Indian who believes in individual freedoms to shout slogans as much as to disagree with them. Also that these freedoms are best protected if my republic and its constitution remain intact. If my republic and my constitution break up or are assailed, then these freedoms cannot remain intact anyway. So what is that liberalism worth? Anarchism cannot be liberalism. Further, 
that use of force to protect both is illegitimate. The constitution and the republic, the use of force to protect both is legitimate and also a moral responsibility of a duly established constitutional state. Annihilating a Maoist hideout as in Odisha in 2016 would therefore be applauded as the killing of Burhan Wani, but use of a non-combatant Kashmiri as a human shield would be contested as the use of sedition law against those merely shouting slogans, no matter how offensive you might find those slogans. Significant works have emerged lately bemoaning the end of the liberal era. Farid Zakaria foresaw the shift in his great piece, great idea, the great essay, The Rise of Illiberal Democracy, published in Foreign Affairs. I'll share a link with you. And another name we are familiar with, the Financial Times' former India correspondent Edward Luce, who wrote The Retreat of Western Liberalism. They analyzed what fueled it, what fueled it, the rise of illiberalism, the decline of liberalism, the, the rise of illiberal democracy. They analyzed what fueled it, beginning with the failure of nearly two dozen democracies since the end of the Cold War, led by Russia. Turkey is headed there, it's been headed there. It's, it, it's a unique country where the president got re-elected in a situation when he had 85% inflation. So what made him win that? Nationalism, populism, religion. It's a deadly cocktail of illiberalism. American media theorist Douglas Rushkoff, his book, Present Shock, When Everything Happens Now, not Future Shock, Present Shock, When Everything Happens Now, he told us, he, to, he told us it was all attributable to the impatience of our times when attention spans are shorter, conventional narratives with beginning, middle and end are collapsing and we are all living in the present. Though not in the ways our meditation gurus would want us to, they always keep saying live in the present. Don't wait till tomorrow. In fact, cricket coaches will also tell you, play the ball that is delivered to you. Don't play the pitch. Don't play the conditions. Don't play the weather. So not, not living in the present in that sense. What this means is that we are trapped in a continuous churn, having lost our ability to question or make choices. In such a frantic fix, it is tempting to choose the box or pick the box that makes you most comfortable and keep trading fire with those in the opposite box. The result, as with all trench warfare, is wide open space in the middle. The landslide of Emmanuel Macron then, he is now struggling now, but the landslide of Emmanuel Macron then demonstrated how useful this open space can be if you have the audacity to move out, move out of the trenches. It's very, comfortable to, it's very comfortable to be in the trenches, to seek the trenches because then at least you will not be hurt. At a time when the guardian, that final defender of left liberalism is breathlessly celebrating the small gains of Jeremy Corbyn as having ended the Blairite notion that you had to move with the center to win an election, Macron's rise, Trump's falling ratings, I'm taking you back to 2017, Macron's rise, Trump's falling ratings, Angela Merkel's consolidation and regret over Brexit like a, like a buyer's remorse. It all means that too much middle ground had been abandoned too lazily. The Macron phenomenon therefore added to our vocabulary, radical center, muscular middle and so on. Since Indian intellectuals traditionally borrow from the West, especially Europe, it will be tempting to limit the new debate to these new boxes made of the same ideological tiki-talki and the choices will still all look just the same. Some of my generation and maybe generations after might remember where I am borrowing this line from. This is from Malvina Reynolds' immortal little boxes made of tiki-talki. Check it out. I'll share a link with you in the description. It's a classic. Wisdom is sometimes found in unusual places, like the mind of the copywriter who wrote e-commerce brand Snapdeal's tagline, Unbox Zindagi. We Indian liberals need to unbox, to build an idea that's liberal on society, liberal on economy, uncompromising on constitutional sanctity and national security, accepting no root causes excuses for terrorism or Maoist violence, then you won't need to go to Jantar Mantar or promote hashtags to prove anything to either side. May I suggest a mission statement for this dehyphenated liberal? The left thinks I am right, the right thinks I am left, so I get trolled by both. And that 
my friends is also the mission statements or the philosophy in many ways of the print that is also the editorial positioning of the print.